Do you think it's okay to sleep with someone outside of a committed relationship? Yeah. So if you're not in a committed relationship, yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. Well, that's religious, then. <laughs> okay. God first. Would you be happy for your future daughter to have lots of one night stands? Mm, maybe not. Just okay. Because you know, it's better to have a relationship. Okay. It's nicer. All right. Why? Why is it nicer? Would you say? Because it's more, I don't know, when you have one that's there, there's, there's just sex. In their relationship is more affections and love, and it just makes you feel better. No problem. Happier. When a woman makes a man wait before being intimate with him, she is acting out of a biological instinct. When she wants a commitment from a man before sleeping with him, that's coming from her biology. And yet, when some smooth-talking guy at the club chats her up, and makes her feel all these fluttery emotions so that she sleeps with him that night, she's also acting out of a biological instinct. What's going on here? Why does our biology seem to contradict itself? Are we meant to be monogamous or promiscuous? To properly understand this, we need to differentiate between primary instincts and backup instincts. Women have a primary instinct that they follow, but if that's failing, then they have backup instincts that they can revert to. So what is a woman's primary instinct if she wants her genes to survive and get passed on? Well, she wants to attract a mate who has two fundamental qualities. First, he has to have good genes because combining her genes with the genes of a quality male ensures that her children are going to be strong and healthy. Second, he is committed to her and their offspring and he's going to stick around and provide. This is important because good genes are certainly not enough to guarantee survival. There has to be the father around in order to protect and provide. So this is her primary biological instinct. This is her ultimate goal. It's to find the perfect man, both in terms of genetics and behavior. So when a woman is operating from up here, her primary biological instincts, and she meets a guy who's obviously got good genetics and she likes him a lot, she's not going to sleep with him straight away because she doesn't really know what his behavior is like. She needs to take the time to do her due diligence, find out if he's the kind of guy who is loyal and dedicated and would stick around and help provide for any children that the two of them would have. Her biology is telling her to wait, to take things slow and to be cautious. This way she can observe him and study his character and find out just how dedicated he is capable of being. If he does show himself to be a stand-up guy, the sort of fellow who'd make a good father, a good husband, a good provider, that's when the sexual relationship begins. This is the biological basis for that age old advice that was given to women that you need to get a commitment from a man before sleeping with him. When evolution was positively selecting for instincts, they dreamt of the best case scenario where a woman would meet this ideal man and observe him for a while, make sure he checks off all of the boxes before becoming intimate with him. And so you see female chastity and modesty are not some culturally enforced patriarchal ideology. Its basis and origin are biological because it is the most practical strategy to help her achieve her goals, which are healthy children that are likely to survive. This is why I say that high quality women do not have one night stands because they are acting against their primary biological instinct. If she was more high quality, then she wouldn't need to revert to her backup instincts which we'll talk about now. So imagine a woman who's in slight desperation mode, either because of circumstances or because she herself is not a particularly high quality woman. She doesn't sense a great likelihood that she's going to be able to attract a high quality man, a guy who is both genetically high quality and also displays characteristics of being a good provider, somebody who's going to stick around. Well then what are her options? Her genes still want to survive. They want to get passed on. She still wants to have children. And if she senses that she's not going to achieve that goal by her primary biological instinct, this is when she reverts to her backup instincts. At that level, there are three potential strategies for women. Number one, forget about the good genes. Just focus on finding a man who's going to be a good provider. Sure, he's not going to be very impressive genetically, but that means that he's just going to be easier to get into a relationship because he probably hasn't received a lot of female attention. And at least you can sleep at night knowing that your children are going to be provided for by a nice guy, someone who's going to be a good father, someone who's going to provide for them. Number two, focus on the genes. You find some gorgeous guy who's obviously of superior genetic quality to most men. You sleep with him before you've really found out anything about his behavior. 
and you hope that after you become pregnant, that he's gonna stick around and commit. It's just a, a shot in the dark, a gamble. And then there's the third option, which is to sleep with a man with good genes and then convince a different man, somebody who's going to be a good provider, to raise them with you. Deep in a woman's biology, she has the available programs that can be activated when necessary to carry out these strategies. They may not be her first choice. They may not be the primary biological instinct, but her genes want to survive and they'll do whatever it takes. But the more closely aligned a woman's behavior is to the primary biological strategy, the more high quality she is. She doesn't need to compromise because she knows that she's high value. She's gonna be able to attract a man with good genes and good behavior. She's one of the best of the best and so why shouldn't she expect the best man as well? I know as men, we have these strong hormones and these strong drives to sleep with women as quickly as possible. And it can be frustrating when you meet some fantastic girl, but she insists that you wait. She wants to take things slow. She wants to see what kind of qualities you bring to the relationship before sleeping with you. Yes, understandably at one level that is frustrating, but try and take the larger perspective. That's actually what you're looking for. A girl who understands her own value and makes you wait is a high quality woman. I think that there is good reason to be suspicious of any woman who sleeps with you too quickly. Is there ever an age difference where a man is so old and a woman is so young that any relationship between the two of them would be inappropriate? That is the topic of my latest video. I talk about whether or not it's normal and natural for men to be attracted to young women, even women in their later teen years, and whether it's likely that you'll ever grow out of that. I talk about the cultural influences that we're subject to and to what degree that makes us deviate from our biology. I talk about the different moral standards that apply when you're meeting young women just organically through your social circle, as opposed to fetishizing youth and specifically seeking out young girls. I explain why a woman's age of, well, she's turned 18, is not the appropriate moral standard to apply. And lastly, I give the tests that you need to pass before it's morally justifiable for you to date a woman who is significantly younger than yourself. If you're an older guy and you're interested in dating young women, I highly recommend this video. For every video that I post on YouTube, I post an additional bonus video on my Patreon page. That means that at the moment, you're only seeing half of the total content that I create. If you'd like access to the other half, then please go and sign up at my Patreon. It's just a $5 a month subscription and you'll get instant access to my whole back catalog of exclusive videos. It's a fantastic way to support the channel and I'd really be grateful to get your support.